Welcome, I'm Darren, and I'll be your guide today as I look at Score Pinnacle's Select Certified and Pinnacle Certified card sets from 1995 through 1997. Now, this is a pretty long uh, subject, kind of a long video, so I'm going to try to be brief on it. I'd like to break it down into smaller videos, but unfortunately there's a lot of repetition, so there's no point in doing that. So I'm just going to get in, bull bulldoze my way through. Sorry if it does seem to run on a little bit long, but that's just the nature of the set. There's not a lot of not a lot of difference in what was going on. It was basically year after year they were evolving what they did. And that's that's kind of what it is for these sets. And it all stems from the fact that Score was always kind of an also ran brand. When it started out, it was very innovative, but it wasn't a great card and it had to earn its stripes in the card market. And it had kind of a tough time doing that. In 89, they jumped into football where there was no competition for tops, only to find Pro Set waiting there. So in their 1990 release in football, they made a huge improvement, but unfortunately it wasn't even nearly as much as Pro Set had made, and so Pro Set shot clean past them. In 91, they were now starting to compete with, if not surpass, Pro Set, but they had card companies like Action Pact, which were really making life tough for them, so they couldn't really find their place. And on top of that, in 1991, everybody made premium brands, which included Score. They made their Pinnacle brand, and while it was a great brand, they, the problem was there was a lot else going on, and the, the cards didn't stand out as much as they wanted them to stand out. And over the years, they, they were essentially getting surpassed by companies like Upper Deck. And so they, they didn't have a niche anywhere. In 1993, they made an attempt with Select, but they were crowded out by Upper Deck Set SP. They were crowded out by Top's Finest, Fleer's Flare, even Pacific's Prism. There was just too much going on. Score could never find its niche. It could never create something that was distinctly its. And on top of that, Select, Select basically fell into the category of Pinnacle. It was pretty much about the same. So they didn't even have an ultra premium brand. They essentially only had a premium brand. So by 1995, they needed to do something that was very distinctive. And on top of that, in 1994, Tops released Bowman's Best, which was basically like an upgrade on Finest. I mean, they, it was really tough for Fleer to have a place. So for 1995, they decided to take their select brand and made, make an upgraded version of it. And in fact, even in football, they basically dumped select and said, I don't think it's going to work. We'll try to figure it out, which Tops would do with Bowman a few years later. But with in football, basically, select got turned into select certified. That's what we ended up with but certified was first released in baseball that's kind of where that is where it started so the cards that they made were they needed to really stand out because they needed to be competing with finest and with bowman's best they needed to be flashy distinctive and really draw in the the high-end collectors the people who were really spending a lot of money on packs and the card that they made was well it, it was distinctive to, to say the least it was a thick card stock and it had a complete mirror surface around the player with the background in black and white on the mirrored surface. The player was in full color, not mirrored at all, kind of a halo of copper around him and then some copper detailing of the logo and the player name. And that was it, that was the card. And the simplicity of it should have really carried it, but unfortunately it was too much of a gimmicky card. So it didn't have its own distinct draw, its own distinct quality that made it really hold up. And then on the card back, the card back wasn't really all that great. It was, you know, passable. So, but this card set was never intended to be the card. It was intended to be something that high-end collectors wanted to pursue. A low print run and something very distinctive. That was basically the model and it was mid-90s, so of course a parallel. And so they made a parallel of it where all of the mirrored surface had a gold mirrored surface on it. And then on the back, it actually says mirror gold, you know, for what it is. Is the mirror gold as good? No. But it does have a neat gold holofoil quality to it. So at least there is that. But unfortunately, the cards were just done way too simplistically. The card set does have, uh, it doesn't have an, a subset, but it does have rookies in it. And that was a big thing with this set. It was a late release set. So that means the players like Terrell Davis actually showed up in the set. And the, the cards are, the rookie cards are a little bit different because they have a panel of copper tint over part of the background, half of the background. And so the, the players have a very different look from the regular cards in the set, for better or for worse. 
but it does lead to something kind of interesting with the gold card where they the gold tint it basically goes over the copper as well so if you don't like the two-tone like my myself if you don't like the two-tone of the regular card the gold version at least it mutes that so that's that's kind of the advantage that it has but again this was a very bold move of something that didn't have a lot of interest didn't have a lot of intrigue it's just kind of there and that was the problem that they had with the set that they created it was it, it was swinging for the fences but they didn't really bother to worry about what kind of a pitch it was they it was like they shut their eyes and swung fortunately they did have some inserts and that is good starting with their checklist which this is actually kind of interesting because it's a thin like a paper uh, paper thickness but it's like a plasticky card it doesn't feel like a, a valid card it feels like just an insert stuffed into a pack but it's seven card checklist a player on the front and then on the back, either AFC or NFC players. So the interesting little checklists that were very, very unusual. And then for main inserts, they had cert Certified Future. And Certified Future is a, a card, it's a two-tone card, but the thing that's distinct about this, the, this 10-card rookie set, is the fact that it has striations in the card. Now these are not like Sport Flicks. This doesn't have some spectral effect. It just has striations in it, which actually lends a really interesting quality to it that makes it pretty cool. So it's kind of weird that in, in this solid mirror card set, the first card that stands out is a card that has no mirror that is kind of muted because of its, it has something that is intriguing, that does pull you in. And fortunately, because it's a late release, we have players like Curtis Martin here in this card set, which does help. But it, it, it's a neat card nonetheless. They also had a card set called Select Few. And Select Few, horizontal cards, 20 card set. This uses Dufex on the front. And the Dufex effect is not overpowering. It's almost underwhelming. It's, it's kind of busy and kind of uh, underdeveloped at the same time. The cards, I mean, they're interesting, but they're not really gripping. But it is nice to at least have something interesting like this here in these card packs. But these cards do advertise on the back the fact that there are 2,250 of every single copy of the card. These are not individually serial numbered, but they are limited in their print run. So that's, I mean, select few, so you would expect that to a certain extent. But where it gets interesting is they have a parallel of this, which is a, it's almost a foil version. There's actually a little bit of brushed metal effect on it, not a lot but there's a bit and these 1028 so less than half the number of the the main version of it but there are two versions of all of these cards and for 1995 they're very rare for today you know obviously not as much but they were at the time but they also score had their dream team cards pinnacle had their team pinnacle even Z, zenith had z team Having a kind of an all-star team card set in each set was kind of the thing they did. So here they have their gold team. And the gold team cards are so much gold. This is a fully Dufex card, and it's a double Dufex. So it has the Dufexing effect of the, the actual image, but they also have an overlying effect. And the combination of those two gets a little bit too busy, but it's all gold to black tint. That's the whole surface. And... Unfortunately, it becomes difficult to see who the player is because everything does kind of run together. This is a case where they came up with a brilliant idea, but they forgot to isolate and enunciate the target. It's, it's a little bit too much. That being said, you turn this card over and look at the back. That is a gorgeous card. That is what the card front should be. If they flipped this card around, it would be one of the great cards of the 1990s, but they didn't. So instead, they have one of the best card backs of all time and the card front is just kind of there but it was a it was an interesting thing that they tried and it was a it was definitely a cool thing that they tried but for 1995 i mean it was it was pretty pretty nice what they did in terms of just the concept but turning a concept into something real is it, it takes a lot of work and score was still feeling their way through so it didn't work the way they wanted but at least the inserts did but in 1996, they wanted to make another crack at it. And this time they wanted to really, really own the market they wanted to go after, which was they wanted to get the high dollar collectors. And for people who are gonna be spending a lot of money, you've gotta have something that really does intrigue them. And that starts with a card design that looks good. 
So for 1996, they went with an actual mirrored surface in terms of they have mostly a card back, or, uh, an image background that then fades into a full mirror. So the mirror is the whole surface, but two sides is actually literally a mirror. And that, that makes the card stand out more, but it also makes the player and the vibrant colors of the player stand out a lot more too. So the combination of those two is, is a really good a really good combination in order to make these cards distinctive as elite cards. Now it looks like a card that's going to grab your eye. If you're looking at a display case, if you're looking through a collection, you're going to run across these cards and go, whoa, oh, that's nice. And that's what they wanted to do. And the copper, again, for, for the text and the logo, again, in this card here now, it gets really highlighted as a contrast to the mirror. So they finally figured it out. And on the card back, while it's a busy card back that you can't read, it looks really good. It doesn't look great, but it looks really good. So they've got a combination of a card coming straight out of the packs that is, it, it's everything that they should have done in the previous year. Here they were finally getting it to work, and that's good because they were going up against brands like SPX. So they really needed to bring their A game. And the card set itself was a little bit more diverse. They still had their rookies, so obviously, and again, it's a late release, so we get some really good rookies in here. And the rookies are not different from the regular cards. It's only the logo that they have. That's the only difference to the regular cards. But they also had a subset called Silver Spirals. And Silver Spirals, bunch of quarterbacks, but here you get that two-tone effect. But instead of having copper on the side, they have, I don't think it's an actual color version of the, the background. I think it's some splotches of color that is stuck on there but it makes it, it gives it the feeling of actually having some full color background on the card, just a little hint, which makes it kind of interesting. Not great, but kind of interesting. And that was what they did for the card set. The checklists were similar to the previous year, but they didn't have any players on the front, so you know who cares? But they had those kind of like as fillers. But the card set was never intended to be the, the main draw, just like the previous year. But here, they really, really wanted to lean into parallels. And oh my word, did they ever. The first parallel that they went with was their Artist Proof cards. And with Artist Proof, I mean, they were of course gonna do that because in Score and Pinnacle, they were doing that. Zenith, they were doing that. They were doing it everywhere, so of course they should do it here. And the Artist Proof cards, the big difference with the Artist Proof cards was the fact that all of the copper foil is replaced by a hollow foil. And it's a really rich iridescent effect. Now, it is a little tricky to see it, but once you see it, it looks great. So they don't jump out in the way that the other cards do, ironically, but they have a better residual effect if you take the time to explore it. So they had their artist proof cards, and then they also had their, well, not gold cards, they actually went with red. So this is their certified red card set. And here, the whole regular mirror surface is replaced by a red kind of mirror surface. And then, you know, why not, why not do a, a blue version as well? So they have the red version and the blue version looks a lot better. It's partially because the blue has a tendency to look better in larger quantities, whereas the red tends to work better in little details. But also, if you look at the contrast of the copper to the blue, the distinct strength of that contrast is a really wonderful effect. So these cards look really great. But the red and the blue, and to a certain extent, the artist proof, those were the easier parallels to get. But they were doing more. They wanted to have some parallels that really drew in the people who were going to be hunting through these packs trying to find the rare cards, and that was with their mirror red cards. The mirror red cards are, in this case, that background that fades into a mirror. Now the background is the red treatment, and then it fades into the mirror. It gets rid of the, the red color. And because of that, now the red is kind of isolated and the mirror really helps to, to make the cards feel very elegant, very formal, very, 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 very impressive. So they were getting, they were finally figuring it out. And if you're gonna do red, why not do mirror blue as well? And they did. So these cards also come with the mirror blue. But look, why stop here? Whatever happened to the gold cards in 1995? Well, they saved them for the mirror gold. And these cards were very rare because it is an estimated print run of 35. Now, today that doesn't seem like that big of a deal. Some collectors don't even care unless it's under 35. But at this time, 35 cards was 
really adventurous. I mean, that was really pushing the envelope of what you could even contemplate with cards. But at any rate, they had these cards for those who were incredibly lucky enough to pull the cards. So that means you have a whole bunch of parallels. Except in Pinnacle and in Summit, they had done a whole nother release, which was their premium stock. They wanted to do that here. They wanted to release a whole new set of packs for the same set. These were more elite, they were more rare, and so they did their Select Certified Premium Stock card release. These cards are the same as the ones in the regular set, no different, except the background actually has kind of a Dufex-like effect. It has this radial pattern. A bunch, the way that the light works is really kind of intricate, really kind of cool, and kind of muddled at the same time. But at the end of the day, it still is a really cool effect that they did. It was a cool concept that they did. But what's really great here is that they had a, a mirror red parallel just a mirror red parallel. They didn't do any others. And when you consider that the rarity of the mirror red parallel is out of 20, I'm glad that they didn't do any more. I mean, that was insanely rare. It really was mind boggling. The main cards are estimated to be 7,000 print run for the, the main cards in this set. But the parallel, that red parallel, there are only 20 of each one, which means they're really tough to come by. And that's the kind of rarity that we didn't even collect at the time. So it was it was pushing the, the boundary of what they were even capable of doing. And you may run into some of these cards with the, the promo versions. So they did a whole bunch of promo versions of pretty much every different iteration of these cards. Now, is that all cards in the set? Probably not. I don't know that anybody's put together an exhaustive checklist of where these promos come up, but you can find promos of pretty much every different parallel of the the cards at least in the main brands but not necessarily for for each player so i don't know if individual players show up multiple time with multiple different parallels or if it's just individual players with individual parallels the way it works but there are a lot of these promos that you're going to run into now having said all that there are two insert sets that were released in the regular select certified for 1996 and the first one is their gold team cards these cards are thinner, they're not, as, they're not as overpowering as the 1995 cards, and the, the effect on it reads a lot better, but it's not very interesting. So it is better made, but it doesn't read with the same level of boldness, relatively speaking, as the previous year's card. Is it better or worse? It's, it's the, the next one that they did. They're okay cards, it's just that they just don't work as well as they should. But they did do one other insert set, which was their thumbs up cards. And this is a hollow foil background with a big thumbprint that I think is just a standardized thumbprint with a player. And that's basically all there is to it. These cards are a lot thicker, but that was what they did for 96. Because the whole point in 96 was they wanted to get away from inserts and get to parallels, chasing for rare cards in the set. And it was, it was a bold and adventurous move that was ahead of its time, which I'll talk a little bit about later on. But... For 1997, Pinnacle was finding that they really had to find a way to earn their keep, their, the ability to continue to make cards, the ability to continue to be a part of the card market. They were on borrowed time at that point, and so 1997, fortunately for us, was a year where they pulled out some great, great, great design work. And Certified fell into that camp. But one distinct thing about 1997 was the fact that because Pinnacle was trying to pull back and really make its brand work, it wanted to have better brand recognition. So it said, all right, forget select. I'm not even going to, we're not going to worry about select in football. In baseball, they were still doing select, but in football, select is basically gone. They wanted to take the certified and brand it with Pinnacle to really highlight the, the nature of the card brand itself, which was Pinnacle Brands. So for 1997 alone, they changed Certified to Pinnacle Certified. So that's the 1997 name, Pinnacle Certified. And these cards have a, a true mirror background or mirror border. In the 1996 set, they had basically a border which made the card work better. Well, here they went with a true border, and then there's a football shape with a black and white mirror surface effect of the background behind the player, so it's isolated in there. And then they have some uh, black band down at the bottom, kind of like a Lombardi trophy stand, and it kind of highlights the, the foil on the card for the text. The, overall, the card is more refined. It's a nicer card. 
maybe not as much fun, but it's they've really got the card kind of to its height. But you might notice something. It has a cover, a protector on it, like Finest had been doing for a number of years. They actually put that on every single card because they wanted for high-end collectors to know, look, this is a high-end brand. When you open a pack, you're not going to get damaged cards. So that's a distinct thing about the 1997 set is the fact that they actually do have the protectors on all of these cards. And then the card back is, it's not great, but it's, it's, it's almost as good as the previous year. But here at least it's better designed in terms of you still can't read anything, but it has kind of its own cool qualities. So, you know, for what it's worth, that's pretty decent. But look, we're here to talk about these cards and the set. It, I mean, it has some rookies. The rookies look the same as the regular cards in the set. There's nothing to talk about there. Let's talk about the parallels. Specifically, let's start off with their artist proof, or more specifically, the lack thereof. They didn't bother to do artist proof in 1997. They went straight to their certified red. And the certified red, they have, the, it's around the mirror surface on the background, which means that the football, everything inside the football remains silver tone. And because of that, it looks a lot better. So it's, it's a really cool effect that they have on this. And what about the blue? Well, they didn't do a certified blue. So they only had the certified red at the base level. But fortunately, they did have the mirror red. And But they did do the mirrored cards. The mirrored red cards are really, really nice cards. Now, in this case, they just have the red up at the top. And then the, the football is still silver. But the, the red, it basically fades down into a mirror surface down on the bottom. So it has a more elegant feel. The inside of the card isn't as bold, but the overall card, the effect looks great. And it has an actual mirror surface. See, the certified red doesn't have a mirrored effect on the card. Here they do, so it, it really reads beautifully. And of course they have the, the mirror blue, and the mirror blue cards are a stronger appearance because of all that blue, really, really gorgeous. And look, they, they did the same thing for the gold. So the gold comes out. Again, these are very rare cards, but the mirror gold cards, they look gorgeous. But they also wanted to do the, the more re limited release of a second set like they'd done the previous year, but they, wanted, they needed to do kind of a rebranding. They needed to do something that was distinct enough that it stood out in the market, not like some secondary set of packs. They wanted this to look like it was its own affair. And so they, they went with the branding of Totally Certified for their, for their really high-end brand, the really high-end version of these cards. And oh my word, was this, was this a high-end affair. First off, the cards are, as you would imagine, exactly the same as the regular cards in the set, except in this case, they have a textured surface. So it's like a dufex effect on the surface, which makes the cards look really cool, but it doesn't have the mirror effect that, that was on the previous cards. But unlike the previous year, this is actually textured. But they do also have the, the coating over the top. And you might notice that the copper on the card is replaced by gold. So they, they did this card as kind of like a, a really, really premium high-end version of the regular cards. So it's very distinctive. Well, that's actually not what's so distinctive about the cards. As flashy as all this is, the thing that was most distinctive about these cards is the fact that on the back, they are individually serial numbered out of 4,999. So there are basically 5,000 copies of each of these cards at the base level. Now, sure, in the previous year, the, the equivalent set had had a stated print run of 7,000, but here it was literally defined as less than 5,000 cards of each, all individually serial numbered. This was a big deal because to open up a pack in the most common card is that rare. This is the kind of thing that can shake up an industry because all of a sudden you're looking going, oh man, we are really in a high level market. And at that time, while the market was kind of there, the sales environment wasn't, which I'll get back to in a second. So the red cards were numbered out of basically 5,000. The blue cards in this, this set were serial numbered out of basically 2,500. So there were twice as many red cards as blue cards. And for the gold cards, these were individually serial numbered out of 30. So very, very, very rare. And so to get back to the thing about rarity, the problem they ran into with this was that the market did not have the infrastructure to pull it off. See, right now we live in a world of eBay, Beckett Marketplace. It's easy for the whole world to trade cards all in the same space. So if you're trying to collect some ridiculously 
niche card set. The cards are out there and you can actually access them. But here in 1997, there was basically no internet. We were still learning about this fantastic world of, which was called the World Wide Web. It was still a brand new affair. There were, car, there were major companies that still didn't even have their own websites yet. So we didn't have that kind of access. We were going to card shows. We were going to card shops. You had to have big money, big time, and cr some crazy legs to be able to travel around and collect a set like this. That was the problem. They pushed a card set to a point where the market really wasn't built to be able to collect the set. You could collect the red set. With some work, you could collect the blue set. Could you collect the gold set? Not really. The market wasn't there. So this is one of those sets that was just way ahead of its own time. And we would eventually see um, you know, what Upper Deck and companies were doing with the numbered out of 25 cards or numbered out of five, etc. Those were like fun cards to get. Those weren't really sets to pursue. But this was the set that really showed just how crazy the card market could get at the high end. And that's what it was. And I don't know that it could have had legs down the road. I mean, after a couple of years, it could have picked back up. But at this point, it was just stretched a little bit thin. But that's enough about Totally Certified. Let's go back very quickly to Pinnacle Certified where they did have two insert sets. The first one was their gold team, only the, here it's called the certified team. And the certified team has a mirrored surface and it has a, not a textured effect, but a, a different type of effect on the card. The two are counterbalanced. And then it has this wonderful ruby detailing around the card. But they had a parallel of this, which was their certified gold team. And here the, the non-mirrored surface is replaced by a Dufex gold surface that's really gorgeous. A wonderful gem-like effect but you might notice that all the ruby is replaced by copper. So it has a very different look. But in baseball, they did do a mirrored gold version as well. In football, there's a rumor of it. I have never encountered one. I have never seen any evidence that it actually exists. So I, unfortunately, I can't tell you one way or the other at this point about whether there's an actual mirror gold version of these cards. I doubt that there is, but um, you know, again, it's not something that I can add. Now, if you do happen to know about it, please let me know. Please let me know because this has been driving me nuts for years. But at any rate, they did that. But they also had one other insert set, which was a very, very, very adventurous set, which was called Epics or Epix. And this was a set broken down into three releases. Some of the cards appeared in Pin 97 Pinnacle, some in 1997 Pinnacle Totally Certified, and some in 1998 Score. Now I go b more in depth in this in the 97 Pinnacle video, so that's, the, that's where I would advise that you go and look at it. But basically, at the end of the day, it is a card set of 24 cards grouped into three groups of eight. And each one, each one of the cards is broken down into three different categories and three different colors, making a combination of nine cards for each player. And in each release, three of the cards for each of the player shows up. And in each of the three different groupings of eight, has a different group that is featured in those packs. So it was a, a bold move where you had to collect basically all three sets in order to complete this set. So that was the other thing they had in the set. Other than that, they really didn't have anything. That was what they did for Pinnacle Certified. Now it is a lot, but it's mainly a lot because they, they were trying to figure out how to get more stuff out there for high-end collectors to pursue. And they were doing something that actually looks perfectly comfortable today but they were doing it in 1997. So it's a very different world that they were trying it in, and it was just too much of a move. But Pinnacle was on its last legs anyway, so there would be no 1998 for us to see this in, in football regardless. It'd be interesting to see what they would have done, but I don't know whether it could have held up. So at any rate, that's it. That's all of the stuff, and it is a, a surprisingly large amount of stuff. So I hope that you've, I mean, obviously, if you're still here, you've held in. Thank you very much for, for following through to the end. And um, definitely, like I said, definitely check out the 97 Pinnacle if you want to learn some more about that. And certified that, that whole story, I've done that as well. Check those out. Subscribe if you haven't done so already. And yeah, thank you very much for watching.